It's Sunday, September 4, 2022, and welcome to the 29th episode in this series from Midas Touch and 5-Minute News called The Weekend Show, where we take a deep dive into the news of the week. Subscribe to the show as audio in addition to my daily 5-Minute News podcast on iTunes or wherever you get yours. Joining me today is Dr. Stephen Hassan, a mental health professional and expert in undue influence tactics used by authoritarian leaders and destructive cults. He himself was deprogrammed from the Moon Cult in 1976 at the age of 22. He's the author of four books, including Combating Cult Mind Control, Freedom of Mind and The Cult of Trump. Dr. Hassan, Welcome back to The Weekend Show. Thanks, Anthony, and congratulations on your successful show. Um, it's really great people are tuning in. I am. Thank you. I, I do appreciate that. And uh, I, I put it all down to your first appearance that uh, kind of <laughs> set, us, set us in the right direction. Ha- happy so, to help. And like, let's plug Midas Touch for giving us the op- uh, platform to help absolutely, get our message absolutely. out. Absolutely, yeah. And the, and the Midas Mighty. Yeah. Um, you, as a kind of analyst of, of, of cults, must be having a field day right now because, you know, there is so much to look at. There's so much to work with, even just as a, as a bystander. Um, obviously, there's a couple of things we need to look at. There's obviously these records that Trump has clearly stolen and kept in his uh, Mar-a-Lago uh, holiday home. And uh, he's actually admitted to that crime several times now, both on Truth Social and on telephone calls with the media. Uh, so that's one thing. But the other thing that I think is more important right now is his followers and their reaction to these crimes. Because, you know, he is kind of banged to rights, isn't he? It's, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't really deny that criminal activity is taking place. And still... His people are rallying around him in an even greater way. Yeah, that's standard operating procedure for malignant narcissists. They're pathological liars and they think they're above the law. And yes, you know, there's so many stories that are coming out about trafficking and different cult leaders around the world. Um, The most interesting thing relevant to your listeners is uh, a growing schism in the new Apostolic Reformation Network, which I wrote about in in the cult of Trump as uh, 40 million Americans uh, uh, base uh, and the spiritual warriors that Mike Flynn is tapping into. Uh, And essentially, to tell your listeners very quickly, um, the, these are not like traditional evangelical Christians. The media has been misreporting to the public for years about these folks. These individuals, they're men or women, claim to be a prophet or an apostle. I'm putting my hand over my head for the listeners uh, who claim they can get talk directly to God and get direct revelations and speak in tongues and cast out demons and do faith healing. But they operate as authoritarian cults in the sense that they control their members' behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions to create a new identity that's dependent and obedient on the apostle or the prophet. And for those prophets who are sticking with their prophecy that Trump would win the 2020 election, they're in a bit of a bind because at least in the Old Testament or the Torah for us Jews, uh, it says if somebody prophesies and it doesn't come true, you should stone them to death, right? So these these people who said Trump would win, God told them, and he, Trump didn't clearly win, Uh, so they're sticking with that, but then there are other people in the new apostolic reformation network who are like, well, it seems it's pretty clear that Trump lost the election and we should be very careful about prophesying about political events. So there's an opportunity I feel, uh, for the right messaging to go out to, uh, really talk 
Christian language to these uh, true believers and and ask them to pray directly to God and not fear satanic invasion if they disobey the absolute dependency on the cult leader. And that's, by the way, what happened to me in the Moonies. I was totally uh, brainwashed into believing Moon was the Messiah and I and Satan would be invading me a la Exorcist movie, Anthony. So I really was afraid, uh, even though I grew up not believing in Satan or evil spirits or demons. And by the way, I don't believe in them now. Do you think it's interesting, as I do, and as an independent journalist, I think a lot of independent journalists are often screaming at the media for leaving out the most important elements of this whole divisive politics, and that is the cult and and, and the, and the uh, psychological aspects of this. And, and you know, they, they love having experts on television, but they very rarely have psychologists and psychotherapists and psychoanalysts on. And it's like, that's the most important thing, not just to analyze Trump, but to analyze his followers. Why are people falling for this stuff? Because it seems that anybody who is rational and living in reality, sees exactly what's going on, sees exactly how Trump is manipulating people, sees exactly how his surrogates are going on television and taking elements and turning them and, you know, re-delivering them. It's just obvious. And yet the media is is not picking up on this stuff, too busy talking about, you know, the, the partisan and the, the filibuster and, you know, all the, the kind of official aspects of this, but not the psychological. Yeah, so I would add, and I know you had Bandy Lee on, the forensic psychiatrist who edited The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, and she and I know each other well and support each other's work. But she's an expert on dangerousness in courts of law. <laughs> and and why is the media not having her on all the time talking about this? I am of the belief that there is kind of a conspiracy, if not an outright conspiracy, between Big Pharma and the American Psychiatric Association and their misuse of this thing called the Goldwater Rule, which is a guidance thing for APA members. Mandy's not a member. And her position and my position is we have a duty to warn. We're experts. So... She's a psychiatrist. She should be on and other mental health experts. But what? who else should be on, in my opinion, the media is social psychologists, people who understand all of the cognitive biases and fallacies and errors of thinking. Because how we're going to get out of this polarization, in my opinion, is education. And we need to educate people with examples day after day after day so they understand the human mind is very vulnerable to hacking. And we are so addicted to our cell phones and our platforms that unless we can step back, unplug our brains periodically every day, but also avail ourselves of other perspectives. And that doesn't mean listening to Fox all the time and hearing what they say CNN says, or listening to CNN to hear what Fox says, but actually availing yourself. And even better, reach out to family members or friends who don't believe as you believe and have respectful conversations with the attitude of, and this is my recommendation, hey, I could be wrong. You know, you may be right. I'm, I might be in the cult of Soros and I may be brainwashed by the libtards. Because Let's that is the argument, it. isn't it? Yeah. That is the argument that, that, that the other side is also in a cult. Yeah, that's the flip. And that's one of the yeah. techniques I described in the cult of Trump, uh, projecting onto the other that which is what you're doing. So th th 
you know, tr- uh, Trump stole the or did a coup in the 2016 election was blaming Hillary for doing a trying to do a coup and steal the election. But it's once you understand it, and I'm going to cite an FBI, a former FBI agent, and I'm forgetting his name, so forgive me. But he said when he trains his agents, he says, name it and claim it. When you're doing undercover work, if you can identify the techniques being used on you, then you can go meta to it and you can have an understanding of what the forces are that are acting. Can I just ask you about the um, level of belief from those people, whether it be uh, Fox News hosts or whether it be Kellyanne Conway as a, as a spokesperson for former spokesperson for Trump? any of these characters, do they genuinely believe what they're saying? Or do they know that they are protecting the president, that they are just going to say anything to maintain power and to rubbish the other side? I mean, how much cognitively do they know is true versus that kind of cult-like mentality? I wish I could say, and, you know, as someone who does expert witness work, we need to examine a specific person and look at the evidences. And if they're saying one thing privately and another thing on air, then it's easy to say that they're playing a role or they're 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 doing things for money or fame or power. Because Alex Jones admitted to that in court, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, Alex divorce Jones settlement. is a bad actor. And as I wrote in The Cult of Trump, he, he did over 1,000 disinformation stories straight from Putin's RT. Then Breitbart picked it up. Then Fox picked it up. And then all the mainstream, other mainstream media picked it up to say, look how crazy that is. But they were amplifying the disinformation. Yeah. I mean, Kellyanne Conway is ma- married to a guy who, who, George Conway, who has admitted that Trump is a racist and is, is uh, you know, is everything that we fear. And obviously, you know, is in that D.C. environment. I mean, and I don't want to get personal about this, but, you know, how is it possible for somebody who is so extreme as Kellyanne Conway with her alternative facts to be married and live in the same household as somebody like George Conway? That's a really great question. Uh, George Conway, I know, follows me on Twitter and as well as Bandy Lee. And he was one of the first conservative uh, spokespeople, attorneys who is saying Donald Trump's a narcissist. He's a liar. Um, so what's going on in the Conway uh, household? I don't know, but uh, I know they're Catholic and they don't believe in divorce. Like marriage is forever. Because it's a reflection of other families. The reason I I, I cite them is is a reflection of other families around America where there is this disagreement uh, between the people that can see, because it's very clear, you know, Trump is a terrible liar, right? You know, he's, he, it's all written all over his face. He says the quiet bits out loud. He, he has no, he has no inner monologue, right? So anybody who, who is living in reality can easily diagnose and recognize and know when he's lying. It's almost like a light goes off an orange light on the top of his head, right? But, but still, and I'm so keen to get into the mind of people who are committed to him. I mean, is this, you know, this, this is a cult, obviously, but this is no different to Germans being turned into Nazis. Yeah. And I, I do want to mention that I saw an interview with Yariv Moser, who's an Israeli filmmaker who has a documentary on the Eichmann tapes and very quickly uh uh, Hannah Arendt uh, talked about the banality of evil regarding Eichmann, the, the architect of the Holocaust. But uh, this filmmaker was able to uh, retrieve actual videotapes from three years, four years prior to him getting uh, taken into custody by Israeli officials, where he's bragging and wished he could have killed more Jews. So he was attempting to con everybody when he was being uh, tried to say, I was just following orders. I, I don't know what was going on there. It's a total lie. And so 
What motivates people to do things like that? Power, money, and sex. It could be blackmail for sex with underage people. Uh, It could be a variety of things, but uh, I want all your listeners to learn to become educated consumers and to understand reality is complex. It's not black and white and simple. So there may be more complex answers to questions like yours where it isn't just, you know, a single thing. Um, But I also want to just comment one more uh, thing, Anthony, if I may, that when I was in the moon cult, which I was uh, in in the mid-70s, and people would hear me lying about how we were raising money for Christian youth programs or whatever. I didn't believe I was lying because of the greater good. In other words, the ends justify the means. Because I was so indoctrinated that Satan is the god of this world that it's totally ethical to lie for God. <laughs> and, and that was the, I, I wasn't using my conscience and my intellect as a Mooney. I was doing the moon identity that was programmed into me. It, it's, you're right when you say all of these, all of this thinking is so nuanced, isn't it? And maybe that's where America falls down because it is so keen to compartmentalize all of this conversation, the debate, the thinking. You're either one of these or you're one of those. And that's the dysfunction of a two-party state, right? Mm-hmm. Where, you know, there's there's little middle ground and in, independents or libertarians that don't seem to get much of a look in. Where I'm from, we have, you know, four or five parties to vote for. And, and we also have a thing called, you know, real debate. You know, you watch <laughs> prime minister's questions on a Wednesday in the British Parliament and you'll, you'll see people really going for each other's throats. And, mm-hmm. and uh, America kind of, you know, doesn't really do that directly. And, and maybe in some way not having politicians volley means that in households people are not volleying. There's no example being set in in kind of central politics to encourage people to really push people's thoughts and ideas. And, and, And so that's why people post on Facebook, because it's like, well, I'll just put all my thoughts over there rather than presenting them at the dining room table. Yeah. And I guess, Anthony, if I had my way... If my magic wish uh, wand, uh, people would be more curious and more willing to ask questions from a point of view of, hey, let's let's discuss this. Let's look at the facts and the evidence. I'm prepared to change my beliefs on this because all that matters is what's real and what's true, not my ego. So if I mispost something, I apologize or delete right. it. I don't get yeah. it right 100% of the time, but I've definitely learned proper etiquette. Don't share something you haven't read or have sourced yeah. as a reliable uh, source first. Well, Twitter have just added an edit button, so uh, things are going to be a lot easier from now on. Um, I, I, I want to get on to Joe Biden's kind of anti-fascist speech in a, in a few moments. But Great. first, let's just, let's just finish talking about the, um, uh, the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago and Trump's reaction to that. Because I think if, if I don't know if you have Truth Social or if you do, I, I, don't. I don't, I won't put it on my phone, but I, I look at it when people post or repost uh, his stuff. The stream of consciousness that he started to post the day he kind of realized, you know, a couple of days after the, uh, the DOJ kind of unsealed the, 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 the you know, or presented the redacted, redacted document. He, he panicked. You know, his, his mind went into a, a meltdown. In fact, there was a hashtag floating around Trump meltdown, where he started to kind of go full on conspiracy. He started to retweet QAnon material that he used to only hint at. He started to, you know, talk about violence and, a, and an uprising. I mean, it was pretty terrifying stuff. What, what happened, do you think, to Trump in that moment where suddenly he realized maybe for him, the first time in his life, that he'd been caught with his hands in the cookie jar? So my take 
is that, and I wrote this in the Cult of Trump book in chapter seven, is that they are very wealthy, powerful puppet masters who've been using Trump for their own agenda, whether it's to promote fossil fuels uh, and that climate change is a hoax or sovereign citizens or whatever, uh, supporting Putin and Russia, of course, and uh, these extremist Christian nationalist dominionists. So I think that we got it wrong in the media to, to look at him as a mastermind coming up with these ideas on his own. And the thing about narcissists is they're so easy to manipulate because they're predictable. They'll always do, they'll always react in a positive way if you flatter them. They'll always react and do what you want them to do if, if, if they think it's in their best interest, whether they're going to get money or more attention or followers. And so what I believe is people were, some of his followers were saying one thing, so he said those things, then somebody else came in, and then he said that. And um, in, in mental health, we have a term, forgive me for using a, a jargony term, it's called decompensating. And that means people are like starting to fall apart. Like they can't hold it together anymore and they don't even necessarily remember what they said a minute earlier or a day earlier. So it's kind of, like you said, stream of consciousness stuff. He's a very dangerous, dangerous figure and he's compromised the security of the United States and, and free people all over the world. And he needs to be arrested as soon as possible, in my professional opinion, uh, because no man or woman is above the law. That's what we keep hearing. And yet I do think these threats of violence has caused this administration to kind of walk around on eggshells because they don't want more gun, gun violence in the streets. And yet that's exactly what Putin wants. You know, Putin, you know, infiltrated the NRA. Maria Butina was a, a revealed agent. Now she's a parliamentarian in Russia. They want Americans to kill each other because then they can say to their people, look what happens in America. They're killing children and then doing nothing to stop it. Where if you're in Russia, I am told, and they a police find a bullet in your car, you're going to jail. You don't even have a gun, just a bullet. You're going to jail. They don't allow assault rifles. Trump fans, people who are very much in the cult of Trump, who are wearing the MAGA hats, they love the chaos, don't they? Like they're, they, they're so anti-establishment. They've been led to believe that he is anti-establishment. He is a rebel. So even if he did steal documents... There's going to be a percentage of people who are like, yeah, great, because, you know, screw the DOJ and, and screw the FBI. And, and that is obviously very dangerous, you know, to, to rubbish our institutions, because that's what makes the create safety in a, in a country like this. But my, my concern is that a lot of the analysis of, of Trump supporters is that they must be stupid, which I don't agree with, that they... Um, you know, eventually they'll all get prosecuted, you know, as many have been have done off the back of January 6. Mm -hmm. But really, they are they want him to be bad. They want him to cause chaos. They want him to break the law. It's almost like a the cult is they're so involved that they don't care if the country burns. Yeah, they've been programmed to create chaos. They're following the Steve Bannon you know, um, model, and they maybe even listen to his podcast as well as Alex Jones, or they're they're nihilistic, or they've been programmed with cult beliefs like you create your own reality. So if you believe in Donald Trump, things are going to magically work out because that's my hip mindset when I was in the moon cult. Moon is perfect. He he talks directly to God. He says that he knows that Nixon should be president because God told him, and yours truly fasted on the Capitol stairs in 74, 
for Richard Nixon to be president despite Watergate, even though I hated Nixon and thought he was a crook before I was recruited into the Moonies. So they're following the indoctrination and the way out of this rabbit hole Honestly, and I actually did a, a TEDx talk on how can I know if I've been brainwashed. You need the four-step reality testing strategy that I described. The first step is like unplug. Like just yeah. turn off the social media. Stop listening to the radio stations you've been listening. Walk in the woods. Play with <laughs> your dog. Go fishing. You know, hang out. Listen to fun music. And just let your brain come back to you know baseline somewhat because it's, it's a state of of hyper uh, activity isn't it to, to to see all these feeds and to be drawn by the media and to be in the facebook space i mean that is it's almost too much for our minds it is exactly so people need to understand that we are connected to reality through our five senses and that if we're overloaded with too much input, especially emotionally provocative fear and anger and, and revenge feelings and such, um, our critical thinking, our frontal cortex goes offline and um, you can be programmed to believe anything, that you're a space alien in a human meat suit you know, or that, you know, gravity is just a thought. It's a construct. Yeah. And if you don't believe in it, you can step off the top of the building and you won't f you won't die. Huh? This is the, the, the flat earthers, right? That's the well, same the thing. Flat earthers. But so, go back to the Matrix movies, please, right. because so many of the indoctrination paradigms and ISIS was using the Matrix, too, by the way, as well as the Lord of the Rings to help recruit and indoctrinate people. Oh, and I left out video gaming programming that is encouraging people to think it's fine to kill as many people as possible in the shortest amount of time. And like this Be is because not because reality is is indefined or reality becomes something that is only in a certain area of consciousness. Yeah. So that if you know if you look, if you can go into a virtual world and behave like this, what is to stop you from taking that behavior and placing it into the real world? Is it the line between the real and the virtual becomes blurred? Yeah, and I'll go one step further. I'm trained in hypnosis since 1980 as I was researching brainwashing. There was a missing element. And when we are in a hypnotically uh, uh, induced state of mind, um, up is down, left is right, because we're not in the real world engaged in real time with feedback here. So um, there is a solution because deep down inside, people don't like to live in hate and fear. People like to be treated with respect and kindness and honored and have real friendships, not followers of strangers, but like actual live people who care about them and that they can care about. So there is hope, but we have to educate the planet about the Internet and how mind control cults have been weaponizing their stuff using our privacy data that's been collected against us, AI, and other addictive platforms. Uh, the human mind has never been online until the 90s. This is a yeah. new in reality. And I'm very, very worried about the metaverse uh, where you put on the goggles and you can really be programmed to be a suicide bomber or think that you're a patriot saving America, pick up your your uh, your AR-15 and go and shoot some kids. When I look at uh, social media of re Republicans or certainly MAGA people, 
A lot of the grammar is pretty terrible. The spelling is a mess, much like Donald Trump, actually. You know, there's, he used the word uh, device instead of divisive in a, in a truth social posting on Friday, which was kind of, kind of amusing. It was a bit like the Kofefi moment. But um, I want to talk about intellect and, and, and education. And because I do believe it's a myth to say that stupid people support Trump and thoughtful, smart people support Biden. But you could argue there is a little truth to that. It's not just based on grammar and one's ability to construct a tweet. But where, where does that sit for you? I mean, is it because you write in your book about, you know, yourself being indoctrinated into a cult? You know, you're a smart, educated guy. You were 22 at the time. I'll give you that. But there is access to vulnerabilities. You write about everybody has vulnerabilities. What is it about the people that are attracted to Donald Trump? Are they undereducated? We know America is not one of the great educators of the world. And 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 yet, despite that, all of my favorite stuff from playwrights and authors and, and great thinkers all tend to be American. So what what is this disparity between the 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 level of intellect of people that are drawn to one team or the other? Oh, boy. So uh, I want to say that it is a uh, error to uh, believe anyone who's been in an authoritarian cult or controlling relationship is stupid or weak or uneducated because there are tons of us who are extra honor students, skipped eighth grade, etc. I was reading postgraduate level when I was eight years old. Um, but what I want to say is that my thesis is the bulk of the cult of Trump are in cults. And they're following their leader and who's saying we need to follow Trump now. The minute their leader says, I just got a new revelation, it's DeSantis or whoever, they're going to switch to DeSantis without losing a, a beat, in my professional opinion. Now, the thing about the Internet is it's casting such an incredibly wide net and some people are are on the spectrum, they're lonely, they're isolated, and so they buy into this uh, online community, whether it's a Reddit or whatever. Um, and uh, so there may be a, a, a messaging thing where some of these messages are sounding very uneducated and illiterate, but... These folks are not running the show in the pyramid scheme. They're they're the 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 bees, the worker bees at the bottom, and the, but they may show up with a gun if you tell them to, uh, you know. And um, so, but they won't be told, will they? I mean, if if you and I, you know, my my landlord is a Trump supporter, and, and he accuses me of drinking the Kool Aid. And, and I have tried, you know, I'm a relatively eloquent guy. You know, I have tried to make him see from the other side. And I just give up, Stephen. I just cannot. But you, you got to go incremental, to Anthony. You can't yeah. <laughs> try to do it all in one conversation. And right. I really, the secret weapon, it's not secret at all, is respectful questioning. Yeah. So you think that I've drunk the Kool-Aid. Please educate me. Let's make a deal. You share something that was particularly influential and persuasive for you. Let's watch or listen to it together and pause and discuss it like adults. Then it'll be my turn to share something that I think is persuasive. But well, there is a refusal to engage, isn't there? You know, and this is something I come up against quite a lot with people who are in the cult of Trump is that they'll put it out there a bit like Trump himself. But they can't actually or they're not prepared to give you the time to engage on a, on, in a deeper level. Is it because they know that their argument is flawed or they no, don't have the I think, capacity? What is it? I, well, I mean, there are troll farms where people are just plain paid or there are bots. Yeah. But in terms of if there's a real person that's living in, near you that you engage with in real life, I think you can do a reset, say, let's start over again. I'm really interested in you. I want you to to take the time, but you need to it's not a one 
conversation thing. And for right. a lot of people that I know who have people in the MAGA cult, um, they're burned out because the cult technique is overload. Send you 50 links and yeah. say, do the research, Anthony. I've done the yeah. research. Well, but yeah. there, you, you, you have to break it down into small incremental pieces. And the, the, the Achilles heel with anybody who's in one of these authoritarian mind control cults is to understand they don't believe they're in a cult and they don't believe they're brainwashed, but they believe other people are in cults and they're brainwashed. And the two things that I've had the most success with is talking about Chinese communist brainwashing and pimps and traffickers. Right. And then using my bite model of authoritarian control and the influence continuum to explain how the Chinese people were being mind controlled by Mao and even currently uh, uh, Uyghur Muslims are being programmed to become Han Chinese uh, or pimps and traffickers and especially the QAnon folks. By the way, it's now morphing on Twitter to being ultra MAGA. So yeah. you won't because they know law enforcement's looking for QAnon. So oh, now I it's see. ultra MAGA. But in any case, the talk of a lot of those folks think that they're saving children, that the Democrats are pedophiles and they they're killing children and stealing their adrenochrome or whatever. This is, you know, an indoctrinated cultic ideology. But explaining, and I have the credibility because I've worked with sex trafficking survivors and labor trafficking survivors and done interviews and podcasts about it. Let's talk about those techniques and then you back your way into their experience and tell me how yours is different than the lying that that a pimp is, uses is, to is groom that, someone. In your book, you talk about confirmation bias. Is is that connected to this? Is that something that is that a technique that is used that kind of makes them buy into these theories? Not really. So comp confirmation bias is a social psychology uh, 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 thing. Okay, I'm having trouble finding the right word, but it basically is a principle that we have filters in our mind and that we screen based on our beliefs and let in things that we already believe that will confirm those beliefs. And we need to make an extra effort to step back from those beliefs in order to gather informa other information to reality test whether those beliefs are actually true or not. And so um, what I'm shocked by is that money is, it's, I'm not shocked by the fact that money is driving the media, but what I'm shocked at is how little it seems the top brass of the five or six major corporate entities that control most of the media uh, in America are not thinking of the future of the planet <laughs> and their children and yeah. their grandchildren and are not realizing you can't just, you know, follow the tail wagging of a dog you have to put the leash on the dog and lead the dog right. it's not the well, other isn't, way isn't around. that the line between being a kind of commercial entity and a public service broadcaster and you know if you're a public service broadcaster you have a duty to warn so if there's a tsunami coming you have to make a public service yep. announcement if the rise of fascism is coming you have to make a public service announcement and stick to it and not be distracted by events that are more trivial right and and use uh as well-established journalistic standards for truth telling or for fact correction if a message is incorrect um and but america and doesn't the, have those channels anymore i mean right the, we the, used the, the, to we used, used to, to the yeah. fcc had guide rails up right you know and those got voted down during republican administrations unfortunately oh, and this has been a project over 40 to 50 years getting to the point where we are now by the way this is not just a phenomenon since trump arrived this has yeah. been the council for national policy the moonies the Washington Times is a Mooney's publication. Yeah. They had a TV broadcasting facility in D.C. 
Um, this has been a project to dismantle democracy and America's prestige. Why? Because if you're if you're polluting the ground, you don't want government regulations. You don't want to have to pay fines. Uh, if you're a dictator from another government, you want to see America flailing about so they yeah. can't meddle in your control of your people. Right? And if you have the money, then you just buy the network or you buy the New York Post or you buy the Washington Times, as you describe with the with the Moonies. And even right. CNN now has a more conservative ownership. And we're already starting to see a, a bit of a shift in the editorial policy on screen. But, you know, the major broadcasters, the, the, the CBS, the ABC and the NBC, none of them carried Joe Biden's address to the nation on Thursday night. None of them. They were showing Shocking. Home, home improvement or something. You know, I didn't no, realize that. That yeah. is, you know, shame on them, is, if I may. Right. Uh, not the, that they'll listen to me. But um, we really need leadership that's moral, that's based on values. And I've, I've actually written a blog against Ayn Rand and, and people who believe in the Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, like Paul Ryan, former, former politician, and, and Milton Friedman. She was preaching selfishness is good and altruism is evil. And so a lot of these folks are, uh, are, are, are libertarian, thinking the less government, the better. And why pay for roads? Why pay for public education? You know, I'll, I'll pay for my own kid's education yeah. or whatever. Well, it's, we've seen the negative effect of that in Mississippi, where there's no yes. drinking water or even washing water, bathing water. There's, yep. no, there's, there's no water for irrigation or, or to clean a car. Right. Uh, and, and, th and that is the tragedy of, of you know, focusing on like uh, banning trans athletes and, and not actually thinking about the, the very basics of, of humanity. And there, of course, you have a 38 percent of Mississippi is, is black and they're the people that are suffering the most. Um, let's just go to Joe Biden's speech, because it was a, a significant, I would say, a significant moment in history. Yep. And I actually think we're going to probably look back on this speech, uh, or historians certainly were, at a moment when an American president stood up against, a little bit like Churchill to Hitler, you know, he warned American democracy was in grave peril by Republican forces loyal to Donald Trump who fan the flames of political violence in pursuit of power at any cost. Uh, and I'll just quote him. He said, Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. And uh, he kind of went on to basically say the F word, you know, which is something that I've been... Uh, talking about for months on this show, fascism, mm. you know, to understand the the importance of identifying fascism and, and the difference between a free America and America that is under the control of fascists. And, I mean, we have never been so close, have we? No. And it's... Um... You know, I have, I'm 68, so I grew up, you know, in the Cold War era. I was in the last draft lottery to go to Vietnam. I, I've seen, you know, the highs of America, but also there's so much that America has done immorally, improperly, uh, too, that we have to be held accountable for. But I like the aspirational piece of his message that, look, it's a, a democracy is an idea, but it's not going to happen unless we roll up our sleeves individually and personally and work for it. And the fact that so many Americans um, are, have not been voting, you know, there have been more and more in the last two elections, but... We need a, a, a redo in the systems, and I really think the Supreme Court allowing for dark money, endless amounts of dark money for anyone to give to political candidates is a big mistake. I think that needs to be changed. I'm not sure how fast it could be changed unless the Democrats win a supermajority, 
and 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 put you know voting rights act in place and equal rights amendment in place etc um there's a way out but i really think that name calling alone is not going to do it there needs to be substantive policy and if anyone's listening from the biden administration uh we need psychological education for Americans and the world on how the mind works and what social psychology teaches us about biases and, and, and to start putting rules in place to get us back on track that we, sh- we can't have a, a shared positive reality if, if anything goes or whoever has the most money wins. But the opposite seems to be happening. I mean, we seem right. to be regressing to Neanderthal man with with knuckles dragging on the ground. I mean, that that really is the kind of the the, the some, where, where it's some at. are, but I don't want I I think there's a danger in amplifying the threat of violence too much. Yeah. I really do. Because it's such a small minority, it's because, the because vocal it's, but well-funded minority, yeah. and 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 state actors and former former American military uh, veterans who know how to do psyops, like Michael Flynn, for example. Like yeah. he needs to be brought back in the military and court-martialed, in my <laughs> opinion. Yeah. Like now, and yeah. this whole notion. With the law, and this will be a, a, a plug for my doctoral dissertation, which is trying to connect the dots with trafficking law and, and models of brainwashing and mind control with my model and how we could present in an ethical, just way to judges or juries how to evaluate undue influence of a predator or a predatory group over a vulnerable person and the control of behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions to make them dependent and obedient. That needs to be ingrained in the law where we can criminalize it, just like Keith Ranieri is now in jail for 120 years on trafficking. Yeah. Do you think Joe Biden could have used some of that language in the speech? I mean, do you think that stuff goes over well instead of... I appreciate you said he was name-calling, but he was actually calling out... For the first time, really, you know, stuff that he's felt very deeply for a very long time personally. And, and he, he never used to use Trump's name, right? He would always right. refer to him as, as my predecessor, the former guy. Yeah. But he, this time it was Donald Trump and his MAGA uh, Republicans using extremists. I mean, by the standards of civility, he's absolutely right to say all of those things. Yeah, but, and it is fascist. But it doesn't go down very well with the people who are on the receiving end. Correct. I mean, so who was he messaging to? And yeah. he was. it seemed to me like he was messaging to his base, the Democrats and people who are independents who like democracy, but not to the people who are in the, the, the totalist cult. And again, for me, my messaging, if I was asked, uh, would be more nuanced where it wouldn't be an us versus them frame, but rather we do have choices, but we really need each other for our mutual survival. And um, again, I just think that this is a public health crisis And we need to do preventive inoculations in schools and through the media on how to discern unethical mind control techniques and unethical hypnosis, etc. We need to train mental health professionals and other experts, educators and law enforcement and how to do interventions with people who are believing this way. And then we need to make it destigmatized and we need a recovery program in public health terms for people exiting because as someone who exited a cult in 1976 I was so confused and ashamed and embarrassed that I couldn't even call the Moonies a cult for three months right and so I have a group of colleagues who are former members of other cults and we're trying to do a hashtag I got out 
movement to just say, look, it happened to me. I was in a controlling cult in my in the 70s or I was in a controlling relationship with a narcissist and I finally got out and de and destigmatize it and make it OK. We put the focus on now and a positive future. I I. I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I feel like we need to start using more um, a, a, a deeper language when we're having these conversations rather than just throwing insults at each other. I would just say that I, I have a theory that Joe Biden was forced to make that speech because he'd received intelligence that there was the threat of violence, that there was a um, a potential for an uprising. Didn't and Gingrich if, even say it out loud? Well, and he's now being, uh, you know, invited in by the January 6th uh, uh, committee. Yeah. But, but um, I read uh, yesterday that uh, in June, and police in Idaho arrested 31 members of the white nationalist group Patriot Front, packed into the back of a U-Haul <laughs> at a pride event. I mean, this is a like a pyramid scheme of white nationalists, which is now spreading across America. And I, I read this after I just after I'd seen Joe Biden's speech where I'd had this thought that hang on a second, he's he's doing this now with not much notice, getting this together, putting it on television, because if he doesn't, something terrible could actually happen, a significant event, the, the, the start of a civil war of, of sorts. So I actually felt that he was compelled to make this speech. D do you yeah, think there could I be agree. some truth to that? No, I agree. I mean, think about the fact my former cult has a gun factory making AR-15s and has a religious cult, the Rod of Iron Ministry, that says you can only worship God with an AR-15. They have two training compounds uh, teaching people how to kill on the streets. Alex Jones has been talking about this for at least a decade or two uh, so that people would buy his supplements and be, <laughs> become trained to be a survivalist. And I don't think it was a mistake, you know, in judgment that they had Marines behind him right. to, to let people who are like, when are we when are we going to be able to use our guns and go after the Dems? Yeah. I think there's a messaging of, hey, listen, that's not going to happen. Not on my watch. Interesting. At least that's what I inferred from the that yeah. setup. Well, because there was a lot of criticism of being, you know, having that red background. It looks like it looked quite like a communist setup, didn't it? With the with the the, the lighting and the way it was. But I actually think it was all kind of intentional because it was basically saying, look. I am representing a uh, the true America, the America that believes yeah. in law and order and justice and what you what you are subscribing to is not what you think it is. So come right. back to me and we will have peace. Right. And the thing about bullies is it never works to placate them because they keep wanting right. more and more and more and more and that's why I really think he needs to be arrested and charged, uh, Trump that is, yes. needs to be arrested and charged. And a lot of his co-conspirators need to be arrested and, and, and charged and arrested and tried for their crimes. I just read in the paper this morning, I think it was, or was a few days ago, about someone who was sentenced to 10 years, a former police officer and veteran, yeah. uh, for using a pole to, uh, to harm uh, the Capitol Police. Um, it's not right for them to go to jail for 10 years and the people who instigated it and incited it, nothing happens to them. Yeah, well, even Trump's lawyers, some of whom he's now selected from television, uh, could now be co-conspirators, including the lawyer that signed off to say, yes, we've given back all of the classified documents. Then it turned out that there was uh, 90 more pieces found. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, we have to go, but I'm very thrilled once again to have you on the show and hear you kind of explain in on a certainly a deeper level the the thinking of of people that we are all trying to get through to and, and communicate with yeah so thank, thank you, you for having much. me on anthony i want to add one more idea which is possible maybe sure. which is to have a congressional hearing bringing in psyops experts cult brainwashing experts QAnon experts 
and the media can learn and everyone yeah. who tunes in can learn what they need to understand about this. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so again. much. Of course, not at all. Uh, so there, Dr. Stephen Hassan. I'm Anthony Davis. Don't forget to subscribe to The Weekend Show on YouTube or as an audio podcast. And also the 5 Minute News daily podcast, which drops every morning so you can hear me tell you the day's news while you drink your coffee. Join me next week, a brand new special guest, three more factual news stories to discuss on The 5 Minute News Weekend Show with Midas Touch. <laughs>